Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, just wanted to introduce you to our team of horses and some of the fun we've had with these guys. I grew up driving teams and horses and uh, then at 18 I broke my back and wasn't able to uh, do it. Thought I'd never ride or drive again. Um, I was taught by a local gentleman in my little hometown how to drive and found out my father knew how and my father was a long-term cowboy. We taught these guys to drive and ride and uh, but my father's went, instilled the love for horses. Uh, I rode horses from the time I was able to get on. Uh, lots of pack trips and fun times. <laughs> We had a lot of fun with these boys. Here we're out sledding with them. Woo! This one, they were fairly green. When we got them, they were not well broke. And we had to train them, train them to draw, drive and to ride. And we were having a blast. I have this little uh, four cart that you can just pull like a trailer. We had some fun events and activities. This was one where we hauled a bunch of uh, a group called Courage Reigns in, a, in an arena. When I got there, it was supposed to be a little trailer. It was a huge trailer full of lots of people. Uh, quite a load for my two boys, but they held it well. And that sand in the arena was deep, but they, if you look at them when they're going across the other side, they're digging in, and uh, they worked pretty hard, but they did a good job. Um, we had a lot of fun with them, learned to trust them and love them, and uh, we really enjoyed you know, the experiences we had with them, or we have with them. Um, they're telling about the uh, kids in the arena and, and what they're there to do. It's disabled kids, some kids in wheelchairs and different things. And we were just getting them out. They couldn't get all the kids on a horse and get them out in the arena, so we took them out this way. And we did several ra parades and rodeos and different events and activities uh, with the team, and they were uh, really moving along well. We did a lot of Christmas parties and pumpkin patches and just family drives and caroling and just had a, a blast with these guys. Um, if you notice here, the one on my right, he is a different color horse now. Uh, here, you can see him on the right again, he's a lighter color. We had a crash. Uh, I wasn't there at the moment. We had uh, been working with a group and an activity and they were harnessing up the horse for me to get there. And before I was able to arrive, the horses spooked and the horses went across the farm and at full blast chasing a, a, with a wagon chasing them, it's a disaster. And the two horses tried to go on one on each side of a tree and killed one of my team. They were brothers and uh, I was heartbroken. <laughs> Broke my heart. I'd been a long time waiting to get here, to get this team and find a place to raise them. I looked all over the place trying to find another team or another horse to match my one team. I had my banjo horse, but I lost my Benny. And I looked high and low and up and down from Mexico to Canada and everywhere else. The breeder had quit breeding these horses the year that these guys were born. So there was nothing out there I could do. Well, I... Had called a breeder and she didn't uh, have any clues on where to go. And uh, about a week or two later, I got a call from the breeder again. She goes, I just got a letter in the mail from some old guy up here who has a horse for sale that matches the description you're looking for. A 16 and a half hands uh, Palomino paint taught to drive is hard to find. Just They're just quarter horses basically and they're, they're paints. And 16 and a half, 1200 pounds, and a driving horse is not the most common horse to find. I thought I was out of driving. Well, we found this guy. I called the old boy who had him. He's up in Canada. I told him I wanted him. He sent me the paperwork. I was looking at the paperwork, trying to figure out some things. And I looked down at the sire and I found my horse's living brother. So we have brothers again. Pretty much a miracle to be able to find these I found him up in Canada, fairly decent price, fairly decent shipping, and we got him down and hitched him up and took off. We were back in the saddle, so to speak, within uh, 
three, four weeks of the accident after we lost the one brother. And we've really enjoyed him. Uh, this new guy, his name was Ben. He's a little bit lighter, but he's a brother from another mother, I guess. So there were three uh, mares that had had colts of the same year. So these boys are the same year, same age again, and they have been a joy. Now, pay attention to the wagon. We had several different wagons, or a couple different wagons. This wagon is kind of small for my team, and we've been looking around for something larger. You can see in these uh, pictures here that the wagon was not proportional to horses. Great wagon to get in, nice wagon, enjoyed it, went lots of places, but it just didn't quite fit them. So I was looking for another wagon. So this was a trip we had planned up into Wyoming, and we were up there fishing with family, and I decided when we were there that I was close enough to South Dakota that I was going to run across the border and go over to Hanson's Wheel and Wagon. This is their shop there. And uh, it was a long drive, it was all the way over the Missouri River, but they had a wagon that I wanted. So I traveled across the country, got the wagon, put it into my camp trailer, my toy hauler, and brought it home. This was the first day we got it home. It was kind of a gray, bone dry wagon. This is a grain wagon. This is a very solid wagon. It's a Peter Shetler. Uh, it was dry, but the wheels and everything were really solid. It had never been beat up or cut up or rotten. So we uh, had it and we, decided we needed to do some restoration on it, just to oil it and to make sure everything was good, replace any boards that were rotten. Okay, so we got all the parts here for the wagon. The pin for the double tree is also the wagon wrench, the double tree, the king pin, the front uh, carrier for the box. Then we have the reach and the tongue, the front gear and the rear, front axle and the rear, and the whole steering mechanism and the brakes and everything on there. So we're just going to put it together and show how quick it goes. So. so we sped this up just so you can see what it takes to put it together. We've oiled it. That's the original paint. Uh, it popped out once we got oil on it and got it cleaned up. Uh, didn't touch the paint. That is am amazing how good it looked. And this wagon's a... A 1916 so it was later later built so it's a uh, well over 100 120 years old I guess uh, somebody else have to do the math for me but uh, everything was in good working order and I was just getting it ready for uh, a trip and uh, we got invited to go on a wagon train uh, to do a, or a historical reenactment and we wanted to have an authentic looking wagon to do that with so this was what we came up with. Uh, pick, picked it up over in South Dakota, Hanson's Wheel and Wagon, after that family trip up on the mountain. So you can kind of see my lift has uh, picked up more than just 57s, cabs and trucks. Um, but that's probably the first time that bed's been off that wagon in over a hundred years. Um, the wagon has three different or two different panels. You can have it at one panel high or two panels high. The seat mounts up on top like that. And uh, this was a grain wagon. This will hold 3,000 pounds, uh, probably more in the back of it than my Duramax would hold. But uh, it's a great wagon, and uh, we had a good time getting it all cleaned up and pretty up. I kind of wanted to leave that patina look. I didn't want to go in and paint it and take away the history, <clears throat> the name, and the color that was on there. So we just oiled it. I used a, a product recommended by Hanson's Wheel and Wagon called Total Wood Protection, or TWP, is a good product. It just uh, kind of give it a little bit of a cedar color, kind of freshened up the wood. Um, once we got it all together, we went to work. I blacksmithed uh, every piece that I had to make in order to make it a covered wagon. I had to make some reinforcements. There was some uh, rotten wood up on the seat, but I didn't want to put new boards on it because the name was uh, so nicely restored or, or still maintained on the back of the seat there. <clears throat> this is our dog, Ranger. Uh, he was part of that uh, whole journey, so we had to include him. In there. It was a hot summer day. But we're getting ready for this trip, and this is some footage from that trip. Uh, we went around 75 miles in southern Utah, and it was a wonderful experience. The people were great. Uh, the animals were amazing. The camps were beautiful. Uh, the people were just phenomenal. This was just a little... Uh, we pulled over just so we could see all the carts go by. See that little pony cart without a passenger there? I'm going to show you some more videos of that down the road. 
But we made good friends, seen some beautiful animals, a beautiful country, and beautiful people. Lots of good music, good food, and a good time with our family. I had my wife and uh, two of my children and one of our adopted daughters, and not legally adopted, but we take care of her, and she's part of our family, came with us. And uh, we had the time of our life. It was a four-day trip. Um, down in southern Utah, the biggest day I think we had was around uh, 20 miles, but there was a pretty good elevation climb in that. We went up over a mountain and then back down. <clears throat> but this was a great trip. Um, hopefully you get a shot of our wagon, you'll be able to see some of the things we've done to it. We added a water barrel and a toolbox using old woods. Oh, here's the little boy. Um, this little guy was either riding that little pony or driving. Right there you can see him shooting bad guys. He's talking, but he's uh, five or six years old and uh, quite a hand. Um, we'd see sometimes uh, he'd jump up in his dad's wagon. His dad would come and get him and put him up into his wagon. We even seen the pony in the back of the wagon one day. Big brother picked him up and put him in there, but it was a joy. He's a tough little kid and uh, I can't remember his name, but we had a lot of fun following them on some of the days with the trail. Um, these are just remote roads out in the middle of Utah with no traffic. We passed two or three cars on the whole trip. Uh, there's a good shot of a wagon coming down. My daughter is loping on her horse while recording this uh, runway stagecoach, but uh, my good wife drove with me and uh, this isn't her thing, it's mine, but she was willing to come with me and to, to do this kind of adventure. Uh, we had a great time. Just for information, we did bring our campers along so we didn't sleep out in the woods. You can get some shots of the wagon, how authentic it is. There's not a thing on it that isn't hand crafted, blacksmith, forged. Um, this is my good wife driving. My arms would get tired and she'd take over, but she's a sweetheart. But if you can zoom in on the wagon there, there's some pretty good uh, details. And uh, sure enjoyed the trip. It was a real blessing for us, an opportunity to have. But I uh, hope to do it again next year. There's a couple of different trains this coming year. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good night.